Daniel Vallis here from InformedChristians.com, a website ministry devoted to discerning current events from a Christian perspective. Today we're going to look at even more amazing, mind-blowing connections that have been going on just in the past few hours and days, pointing to that it appears a lot is about to happen very soon. Now this is a watch, not a prediction. I'm only going to show you what has already happened in current events. I don't know the future. I really do not know what's going to happen. All we can do is look at what has been happening, and we can speculate and make educated guesses that a lot more is about to come down the pipe, but we do not know the specifics of that. Again, this is just a watch. Over the past few days, we've seen a lot of very tight-knit programming, especially with Apollyon, uh, Lucifer, the Cernernos, the Horn God of the Underground, time, manipulation of time, the idea of a, an awakening, that the enemy has long been pointing to this this entire year practically we've shown that in our other videos and but recently just within these these past nine ten days we've seen a dramatic increase of the activity and messaging this cover seems to be a guide of what satan is telling his disciples to be looking for symbol wise in the news that points to a very specific time of literally just these past few days very tight. We've covered different aspects in the, the past videos. Well, what has happened today? If you notice, we talked last time about a lot of some of the symbolisms immediately surrounding the Alice symbol and, and figure character here on, on the cover. But it's also interesting if you just look up a little bit above David Cameron, we see a nuclear mushroom cloud, an atomic blast, and Satan's disciples know that war is coming. That's the red horseman of the apocalypse. War. They know a nuclear war, World War III, is about to break loose on this planet. Think about that. They know that. And part of their signaling is they're telling Satan's disciples to take shelter because all this is about to happen. All this mystery of iniquity planning that they've been planning for a long time is about to apparently come to fruition. We've already seen a lot of the symbolism. It's interesting to note that they depict a pig on overlapping uh, David Cameron. And of course that scandal came out earlier this year, way after this cover was published. There's a lot of symbolism in here. But nuclear war. War is on the horizon, apparently. So it shouldn't surprise us that in the news, today we saw over by San Diego, supposedly the U.S. Navy conducted a test of the Trident missile system. But they did it very close to shore, and so... And they timed it about 6 o'clock, so everyone saw the, the rocket exhaust as it went up. It caught everyone's attention, made big news. Why? Because it, was, it wasn't just a regular test. It was done with specific placing and timing. Timing and presentation is everything. It was a signal. It was a signal. It was meant to be well seen. And so we could say this is a symbol harkening back to the cover of giving everyone a heads up that this is coming down the pipe soon. Which is also interesting because last week, a week ago, Russia conducted intensive testing of their nuclear capabilities too as well. So uh, there's been a lot of that signaling going on, but this one is really in your face, highly visible reference to both the, on the cover there's the, the rocket and the mushroom cloud. So unfortunately, the world will probably be seeing those pop up more in the days ahead too. Okay, so there's that rocket test on the 7th. Then today, another, surprise, surprise, Star Wars media thing came out as a TV spot. Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Again, they've been hammering it home. And again, this is interesting. You know, yesterday they released the fourth trailer. And the director had said earlier on, he insisted that, no, there's only going to be three trailers. So then when they released the fourth trailer, everyone's like, whoa, okay, that's a surprise. But then they released a TV spot today. And people are really confused. Uh, wait a minute, I thought he said there was only going to be three. Why is this important? Because they're going to keep hammering it home, this message, the symbolism in it, because it is very important. It's being sent as a reminder to Satan's disciples to stay the course and to stay ready. It is interesting that the spot opens up with uh, the craft flying down the valley, and it instantly reminds you again of the two pillars, which is a uh, heavy symbolism that we talked about in our article, Time in Tomorrowland, makes references to the gateway to Atlantis. It's often used to depict uh, gateways and portals and stargates and all that heavy, heavy symbolism there. So the spot starts off with this. 
And it's interesting if you take it in context with the fourth trailer that they released too and you do a little comparison on the shots, you know that these two pillars are about to be destroyed. And again, even in that trailer, they even after destroyed, they have two visual reminders telling you that, yes, this is the two pillars. The two pillars are going to be destroyed. And that's kind of a reference to 9-11. That was a, a picture of the two pillars being destroyed. That was very deliberate. That was not by Muslim terrorists. There's a lot more going on in this world than most people want to believe. But again, going back to this trailer, heavy symbolism of the two pillars, the two pillars being destroyed. And also, in this fourth trailer shot, they deliberately moved that particular spacecraft right across the two pillars. Again, reemphasizing the traveling between dimensions that is associated with the two pillars. Okay, then, right after that immediate scene of that craft flying down the valley, they, of course, have their logo indent, Lucas Films. I didn't mention this last time, but do you know what Lucas means? It means light giving or illumination. Yes, Lucifer, hello? You know, that's very close relay, but Lucas means light giving or illumination. Guess who makes these Hollywood films? Guess who's behind it? Satan! Watch our videos, The Armor of God. We have videos on particularly Hollywood and Disney. Of This is their tool. Do not expect to get anything good out of these. These are directly made by Lucifer for his messaging at this late hour, and he's telling his disciples that there is about to be a great awakening of darkness. Now, this particular TV spot started off with a female vo voice doing a narration of almost a, a short little poem. But the narrator made three direct, strong references to knowing the eyes. We talked about in our past few videos of they've been making an emphasis on the eyes. And they're, they're referencing the one who is known by his eyes, Apollyon, the destroyer, who's coming out of the pit. So again, in this spot, they make three references and they're always changing up the scene and bringing attention to the eyes because that's who they're reminding his disciples about. Apollyon is about to awake, about to get here. And it's interesting what the third and final mention of eyes, they show this scene and they have a visual anchor of this robot in it to reinforce, yes, this when we talk about the eyes in this narration, we're talking about the one-eyed figure, Apollyon. And they have the, the black character looking directly at it to direct the viewer's attention directly to it. It's reinforcing that, yes, Apollyon. And, of course, then the camera pans up ever so slightly, and you'll notice above the doorway is a flag with a horned creature on it. And up higher is a, a symbolic reference to the phoenix rising out of the ashes, too. A lot of symbolism here. But then, shortly after that, there's just that brief narration at the beginning. There is only one other spoken part. And this is where a feminine voice says, Follow me, a reference to Lucifer. Dark days are about to come, and the choice is going to be whether you will follow Satan and the Antichrist, or whether you will follow Christ. That is the question that is about to be posed to the entire world. Who will you follow? Who are you following now? Okay, I had to zoom out a little bit. It's getting a bit crowded on here from everything that was everything that's coming together. Question for you. Think about here. What other biblical event is associated with Noah leaving the ark? The rainbow. Genesis 9, 9 through 17. And on the 27th day of the second month, um, that's when the anniversary is, and the, it corresponds on our calendar to November 9th and 10th. Sunset on the 9th through the 10th. There in Jerusalem. So we are on the threshold of a very important anniversary date recorded in Scripture. You know, this isn't just a man-made picked date. This is the date assigned to remember this event in Scripture. Satan, of course, has hijacked the rainbow symbol, and he uses it as a symbol of pride and rebellion, which is what the Star Wars parable is all about. It's all about rebellion of the stars. So Satan has his own way that he uses the rainbow and portrays the rainbow. And Christ in the scripture has has it also as well. It's it's a covenant. It's a reminder. It's a promise, but it is a reminder of judgment. There is going to be another judgment. It won't be with water, but there is going to be another judgment. And prophetically, and everything that we see going on in the world, it looks like we're on the threshold of that about to happen. Now, in our video, Time CERN in the Bible, we talked about a lot of the patterns of how Satan uses the rainbow. We've talked about 
the Wizard of Oz, too. What is the main theme of Wizard of Oz? Going over the rainbow. And then also other references to that, too, as well. The Emerald City from the Wizard of Oz. It's green. Most people don't know this, but one of Satan's favorite colors is green. And if you look back at the Lucas uh, Films logo, it has a slight tinge of green to it. There's a lot of messaging in media. Why? Because it's Satan's media. It really has no place in a Christian's life. Again, if you haven't seen our video yet, Time Turn the Bible, definitely watch it. It will help you understand a lot of what I'm talking about now. And then um, a lot of other pieces are coming together. And also our articles, Time in Tomorrowland and Time in Back to the Future. So we see ourselves, in a sense, about to pass beyond the rainbow date. And the date that Noah leaves the ark, which would be officially the end of the flood. I don't know what's going to happen in the days ahead. All I know is we're about to cross a major threshold that seems to have some very important significance to Satan and his disciples. And so that's why we're watching. And But we also expect that other significant prophetic events could happen at this year mark too, because Jesus told his disciples that his coming and his revealing will be in the days of Noah. And right now we find ourselves literally in the days associated with Noah. So we don't know how many more days or what is in the days ahead, but we shall see. So, then we shouldn't be surprised, and if we look in the media, to also see references pointing to the rainbow. Undeniably pointing to the rainbow. Well, guess what came out on Friday? In San Diego, a new play just started called End of the Rainbow. Being produced by Intrepid Theater Company at the Lyceum Theater downtown is a dark but fascinating and mostly imagined look at Garland's final months. Judy Garland was a main star in The Wizard of Oz. The play opened Friday. Wow, that had some pretty strong timing there. Just here on the threshold of the Rainbow Covenant being given a play commemorating the, the final months, the final steps of Garland's life comes out when we find ourselves in the last final moments before this anniversary. That's not a coincidence. And we can, we'll find out even more. Guess what came out yesterday in the news? NPR, National Public Radio. They did a featured artist story on remembering Harold Arlen, the mystery man behind the song Over the Rainbow. This isn't a coincidence. He, he wrote the song, but it's very, we find out some very interesting clues when we scroll down and read a little bit about this composer. He wrote not only the song Over the Rainbow, but also That Old Black Magic. Yikes. And why did NPR decide to do this story of all days? Well, because it happened to be the 110th anniversary of Arlen's birth, which is 1-1-11. We find ourselves on the threshold of November 11th. The 11th hour, the 11th day, the 11th month. A lot of significance. We've talked about that already. But then we read down further in the article that the guy who wrote his biography said... The way Arlen connected to his process was almost spiritual. He honestly believed that these songs were given to him, Reimler said. It was his job, once the main idea came, to work hard on them, to make them as good as he could. But the initial idea, he believed, came from some other place. Of course it did. There's a lot of symbolism about the occult in The Wizard of Oz. Over the Rainbow. Practically almost the day before the Rainbow Anniversary. Judy Garland play opening up. These are not coincidences. You can you cannot tell me that nothing is, is up. Something is definitely up. The enemy is definitely up to something. But so is our God. At the start of November, really since then has been the celestial signs in the sky, the echo reminders of the star of Bethlehem and different planetary alignments. And even to, today and over the weekend, the moon, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter visually lined up in the sky. I that that's not normal. Normally, a wide variety of different conjunctions and configurations involving the moon, moons and planets typically occur, you know, every day of the given year. But it is highly unusual when three or more bright planets plus the moon appear to reside in the same small area of the sky. This is unusual. This is a sign in the sky. This is a celestial sign. When we see the moon, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter line up in the sky right here on the anniversary of a very significant sign in the sky, the rainbow. Friend, the hour is very late. I do not know what is going to come in the days ahead, but we should watch. And we are being watched too. Of whom do we love? 
You know, Lucifer is offering to his disciples and pretty soon to the world the opportunity to fully follow him. As Christians, we need to remember the last chapter in the book of John, where Jesus talked to Simon Peter. Verse 15, So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he saith unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest wherever thou wouldst. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Follow me. Who do you love, and who are you following? Be sober, be vigilant, be ready. Maranatha.